We're on. We're on. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show VCQ. Dan here. <laughs> Mick here. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Do you remember then? The Happy Mondays. Yeah. Bez. Yeah. Come on, baby. <laughs> right. Um, so we're discussing. We're discussing in the main Friday's video, which was about we used the Fender Bass Breaker 15, mm -hmm. and we plugged it into our Marshall 412 and also a Victory Open Back 212, and just see what we could hear and it spawned quite a lot of questions it was hasn't it fascinating. daniel fascinating um <laughs> you start harry hadley hello harry he gets us off to a really good start in a positive mood harry says average episode <laughs> average episode sorry just took me to the 36 minute mark that's not bad that's okay i mean you that's, know that's pretty good that's pretty good that's pretty good, that's pretty um, good. but uh, mackenzie harrison is much more positive he says People who don't use 4x12s anymore are sellouts, and that's not metal. <laughs> we have Rick McCrea, Matt Gilbert, um, Bartoli20, Eric A, and Daniel Pines uh, all asking questions about extension cabinets. Yeah, very common um, question, this. What would adding an extension cabinet with a different type of speaker that is in the combo, what sort of flavour would that add? Um, so let's say adding a cab with an Nico Blue to an amp with a G12H speaker. Um it's, yeah, very interesting. The matchless is a good example. Matchless is a very good example. Matchless use mismatched speakers in their uh, amplifiers, and it's like the DC-30 is designed around that sound in their, in their 2x12 combo. But actually, there's another question, if I may, yeah. if I may well, com no, combine I the two. I don't two. think this question is about load. This question no. is about speaker type. Okay. So what, what about the flavour of a greenback with the flavour of a... Uh, a gold or a or a, a blue absolutely or, or the speaker type if you mismatch speakers it can be a fantastic way to explore sound but this is the specifically answering about the extension cab you need to be aware that if you add an extension cab um it uh it changes not only with it with the add a speaker but mismatching the impedance will change the way the amplifier sounds as well. We'll, we'll yeah, get to yeah, that yeah. in a second. Because yeah. that's something so yes, that. yes. Um, and Great way to do it, though. Lots of people do mismatch speakers. Probably the, two things to be aware of. One is uh, the power handling and efficiency of each speaker. So if you match a 15-watt speaker that's 101 dB with a 60-watt speaker that's 97 dB, they're going to be very different perceived loudnesses. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, so you just need to watch that. Uh, and that's probably the main thing. Yes. Uh, right. Lots of love for Mick on the Les Paul. Yeah, this, I was very so, very heartened by this. Lots yeah. of people saying that I sounded good on Dan's Les Paul. Jack Daniel, Anthony Noto, Mark, um, Ramrock Man's Jukebox, Tony Noon, Jake, Brian Fitzpatrick, King of the Mountain, and Xander Cruz have all said, Mick, why don't you have a Les Paul? You uh, sound Oh, God, God. I've had a few Les Pauls over the years, and I do love them. I love the sound of them, but I find them ergonomically difficult because I don't know what it is. I like bigger guitars. I like guitars that are big. Have Long been... scale length. No, it's just... So it sits there, right? Right. And because there's not much here, it does that all the time. Ah. Whereas if you've got a Tele or an SG, or even a Strat, it just sits there over there a bit more. Okay, interesting. And now, so it's less of a problem when you stood up, but then now it looks like a child's guitar. Because I'm... Because they're a huge man! Because I'm not a small person. Um... But yeah, I do. And I've been looking at gold tops like lustingly just lately. So thank you, though, for the kind words. Raphael Peva. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Hey, guys, I recently sold my old Les Paul on the subject of Les Pauls, bought a 58 reissue and it's a beauty. Dan's is a 58 reissue. But when I turn the volume knob down on the guitar to get a clean sound, I notice a massive loss of highs and definition in the sound. Is this the pickups? or the Bubble Bee, I think you mean Bumble Bee, I suppose that was a typo, um, Caps. I was surprised by this question. Yes. Uh, we're going to have a look at this in more detail. So I actually have modern wiring on mine. There's another, there's the 50s wiring, which is a, basically a different configuration, uh, the way that the capacitor for the tank control is set up on the, uh, connected to the volume pot. But I, I really want to look into that because it's really interesting. Another thing, um, like, uh, for example, a dear friend, Andy Timmons, uh, uh, he has um, on, uh, on all of his guitars, he has the treble bleed mod, yeah. which basically means as you uh, roll back the volume control, 
you still have an amount of treble going through. It's it's basically works exactly the same way as a presence control does. Uh, uh, sorry, as the bright switch does in your. Um, yeah. Amplifiers. It bleeds less it bleeds. to ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, what you need to do some reading on is 50s and modern wiring. So reissue Les Pauls. The reason I'm confused is reissue Les Pauls usually have fi what's called 50s wiring, and it's a different way of connecting the tone pot um, and where the signal comes first, whether it comes... Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Do some, gonna, do some reading it about though, it, whether it's, it's lug, lug 2 or lug 3. Typically, 50s wiring sounds brighter mm -hmm. when you turn the volume pot down, so we're surprised at that issue you're having. So check what wiring's in your guitar and think about if it's been rewired um, in the modern way. Think about getting something like an Emerson Custom pre-wired harness and get it back to 50s. Let's do that. M yeah. M most people I know, the vast, vast, vast majority of people I know way prefer 50s wiring yeah. to modern wiring. Yeah. Could also be the value of your capacitors. Yeah. Could be the value of your pots in, the, in your old guitar because, goodness me, Gibson has done some funny things with wiring over the years. Yes, indeed. So, yes. Un okay. Unusual. Greg Spear, uh, I thought that the 4x12 sounded great. However, you often hear people say that small amps, e.g. Fender Princeton's, are often favoured in a studio setting. Why is that? Yeah, and um, to add to that, Mike Muscarella sort of expands the point by saying, tell us more about the Pro Junior into your favourite 1x12. Wouldn't you prefer Favourite 4x12 plan. Yeah, wouldn't you prefer um, a bigger amp with more headroom? Um, asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. The, the, the answer to this is the same. Um, there's just something that's harder to capture with a big amp. Yeah. With a microphone. And I, I find. Yeah. We've heard it done really well in a number of situations. One thing that was really surprising for me uh, when we had Graham Coxon on the show, because he he's, has that, the Marshall Plexi, the, you know, the big yeah. one, and he records with that, and he gets the most amazing guitar sound. But um, And Matt Schofield as well, crazy loud guitar yeah, sound. Yeah. And they record beautifully. There's an art to recording loud guitars. It's... You know, and we have it here where we have the most amazing sound in the, in in here, and it's big. But you're in your, you're sort of enveloped in the mm. uh, the atmosphere and the experience of this sound pressure. This, and it's a whole different thing when you go and you hit playback. And it's like, okay, it didn't capture that bone shaking no thing. Well, I think there's two reasons for that, and the the two examples you pick out probably explain it. If you take Matt, mm -hmm. all of his guitar sound is in the mix. Right. I doubt they filter off much low end. No, he also course. uses one of those. The reason we bought those, these Neumann TLM 102s, the reason we bought these um, large diaphragm ca ca capacitor mic um, is because we heard them being re recorded with Matt. with Matt one day in mm. the studio um, on his two rock cab at like God <sighs> volume. And it was Man. just, it was getting everything and yeah. it, it was, it was a beautiful thing. Graham is probably a totally different cat fish where he might record with that, Marshall, but I absolutely guarantee that the low cut is on about 120, maybe even okay. 180, might even be that high. Yeah. No, it's pretty common to filter off 50 and below, but right. um, I suspect most of the low end is gone by the time you hear it in the sure. recording. So Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, to actually answer the question, two questions, it's, I personally find it much easier to record small amps, and I think you can get a big sound out of them that works really well in a mix mm -hmm. bigger amps more problematic and what, what wouldn't we want more headroom rather than a pro junior it's a really interesting thing dan's 59 ac10 has got as much headroom as any 50 watt amp i've ever heard yeah the pro junior to me sounds like it's got way more headroom than the blues junior right um matchless lightning literally louder and more headroom than many 50 watt amps I've played yeah. and it's only 15 watts. So there's something about the design of the amp. It's not just about the wattage. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Jason. Ma Maori. Maori. I have just watched this 8.30 PM Monday night here in New Zealand. So here my question. What does the structure knob do on the amp? Changing this, did its amp sound bigger or not? The bass breaker has got a gain structure knob, low, medium, and high. Um, to me, well, because we, we had the master volume round it about there, mm -hmm. two o'clock, three o'clock, whatever it was, um, using it at, at PM, uh, not AM. 
There's loads of people commented. You've got to set at three. You got to set at three p.m. Why not have? Why not try three a.m. It's like it was, it was, it was a joke. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking it's the same. It's the, it's the it's same. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Sorry. Ha ha ha. Sense of humor failure. It's Monday morning. Um, yeah, for me, if you want higher gain sounds, the medium and the high gain sounds in the bass breaker, they work really well. But to me, it just gets smaller. Yeah. The more gain you stack into any amp, the smaller it sounds to me in the front end. Unless it's unless it's got a 100 watt power section and it's really loud, that's a bit of a different thing. But if you're stuffing high gain pre into very compressing 15 watt power section, all you get then is it just sounds smaller yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. You cool. can literally shove Brilliant. anything into that. Into that. And they'll, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's going to sound most open with the least gain in the front. There you go. There you go. Fusion 72. These guys take a really good concept mm. and mutilate it with all of their talking. Just mutilated. <laughs> they get to rambling so much so that they much. forget what they were doing in the first place. What? I don't, we, do, we never do that. Do an A B comparison and leave it at that. Leave it. Leave it. These guys are two dudes that use gear as an excuse to hang out and film themselves talking. Yes, yes we do. We do. We do. Uh, thanks, Fusion. <laughs> if you watch long enough, um, you'll understand. Okay. Ah, so this is, I was touching on this before. Dom Cole, Kyle Allen, Lively Pelts, Jay Bird, Simpson Music, Nathan Norton. I know this is basic, but it isn't it's necessarily basic. basic, but can you explain impedance of plugging a speaker cab or an extension speaker cab into your amplifier. Okay. Works like this. If you've got uh, an 8 ohm output on the back of your amplifier, and then you connect that to an 8 ohm speaker, the impedances are matched, and it will operate as it's designed to. If I have got an amplifier that has a 4 ohm output, and I'm wondering, or, and I only have an 8 ohm speaker, well, that's fine. You can go from a lower output into a higher impedance. And the way I think about it is like this. You've got your guitar, right? You've got a 6K output from your guitar, say, or 8K, or whatever that is. And if I go into a really high impedance pedal, like a like a, a one mega, you know, standard boss pedal, it sounds great. But as soon as that impedance starts to get rolled back, it, the, amplifier, the, the guitar won't drive it. Right? The guitar is having a much harder time driving it. Same with the amplifier. If I've got a 4 ohm output and that's plugged into an 8 or a 16 ohm cabinet, it will drive it quite easily. But if I go the other way, if I go from a 16 ohm amplifier and I plug that into a 4 ohm cabinet, I will destroy the amplifier. Potentially. Potentially. Depends on the amp. Depends on the amp. So here's the thing. If I'm using an extension cabinet and, and um, if I've got a fender and we always see in the back of the, you know, plug your extension cabinet in here. So if I've got a, an 8 ohm output on that cabinet and I've got an 8 ohm speaker in the amplifier, sorry, if I've got an 8 ohm output on the amplifier and that's the speaker in the amplifier is 8 ohms and I have an 8 ohm extension cabinet, all right, and I plug those in parallel, you get 4 ohms and that's going the other way. So why does that work? And the answer is because of the valves that fenders use, specifically 6L6s and 6V6s. These valves are incredibly tough and they can handle that all day long without any issues. In fact, some people use that as a, as a way to, to change the tone of the amplifiers because it does change the characteristics. It changes the mid-range. Great. But if you do that on a master amplifier, you will blow up the amplifier. You might EL, blow up the amplifier, EL, yeah, yeah. EL34s don't handle that that well. So, And obviously the output transformer is critical in this whole discussion because absolutely. it's the output transformer that sets the output impedance. And usually the outputs on the back of the amp are usually in parallel. Yes. Usually. But again, check. Yes. Fender amps usually are. Yeah. Just trying to think when there wouldn't be because it'd have to be a different connection to the speakers but that would be you could do it anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how that works do some reading uh daniel kuzmichev the true north tweed drive sounds great any chance of tweeds in a box uh comparison test with dan's lazy j maybe yes the lazy j shall be making an appearance soon yeah i don't know lots of people have been saying why don't you use it i'm not, I'm not entirely sure it's there it's we there. should use it more yeah yeah it's, it's wonderful sounding amplifier and i Whenever I do my own stuff, that it ends up being my dry amplifier. I really like it. There's a show um, coming up in a, maybe next week 
maybe the week after where we've got uh, a vintage tweed Princeton and a pucker 58 baseman. Unbelievable. So there's some tweed sounds in that and it's sort of kicked off a bit of a, my goodness me, we should do a bit more of this. Yes. So yes is the answer. Um, right, Chris Benton, Stephen Wade, and Harvest Creative. Would there be a large difference in sound if you're miking through the PA with the 12 inch or using the 2x12 or 4x12 directly? And this was a, there was lots of people asked about yeah. this. What's the difference between the 1x12, 2x12, 4x12 if you're just miking one speaker? Does it make a difference to the front of house or the way that you're recording? Nick? Um, yes, it makes a huge difference. I'm just seeing if anyone else has asked that question and if they have. Anyway, um, yeah, it makes a huge difference depending on where you put the where you put the mic. So if you've got like a 57 or the E906 like we use and you put it an inch off the speaker grill, you're going to be hearing minimal differences in mm -hmm. the cabs. But people will tell you that you can still hear the resonance of a 412 mm -hmm. over a 112. In a live mix, all bets are off because what the front of house person probably does is immediately hit the low cut filter right so they'll probably hit the cut the 100 or 50 hertz straight off your guitar depending on the room um, they'll eq it they'll do whatever they need to do to get a good sound out front the difference is for you on stage um whether you feel it and you love it so out front probably not it's more of a moot point and certainly recorded you know blimey you chuck twenty thousand dollars at a mix engineer to mix your album or fifty thousand you know depending on who you're getting to do it or a hundred quid if it's me um, they will radically compress EQ shape. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah, will yeah, absolutely yeah. destroy your guitar sound to get it to sound good in the mix. Mm -hmm. So it, all bets are off. And so what I was talking about then is if the mic is one inch away. Whenever we mic cabs, it's usually about eight inches to a foot away. So you are getting more of the cab. Plus, a lot of people have said, oh, you can't hear the differences between the cabs because they're just close mics. We do have back there... Um, above pretty much where the cameras are, a pair of AKG C1C, uh, sorry, C414s in what's called a mid-side configuration. If you don't know about mid-side, look it up on um, it's very cool. the web. It's great. It gives you a really good stereo image. And they are usually mixed in somewhere between 15 to 20% in the final mix that you hear on that pedal show. Um, I mixed them higher for that. Mm -hmm. And actually what it was doing is it was accentuating the bottom end of everything mm -hmm. uh, compared to... It's such a minefield. You've just got to make a decision because whether you're stood here, there, over there, or behind the amps, everything sounds completely different. Yeah, yeah. So we just pick a constant and stick with that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that explains it. Dreezy. Dan and Mick, hello. Hello, Dreezy. I'm very curious to know what your normal practice setup is. Well, mine, uh, my setup, I've got two different setups. I, I think anyone that saw my uh, jujitsu vlog knows that when I train, I, I have to practice, otherwise my hands just clam up. So I've got uh, my little Yamaha um, TH10 that I use if I'm just, um, you know, if, I, if I'm just going to plug in quickly and get some sounds, it's there. But but if I'm sitting down for an hour specifically to, to I'm attempting something at the moment that may take me years to work out but I really want to do it um, I'm not going to mention it until I sort of I know that it might be half I capable of doing it but what I do I've got um, the the big trees um, from audio kitchen and it's a it's a little valve app and that plugs into a 1x12 cab and I've got some pedals there specifically and I found this really amazing um, when I started practicing with a a proper tone creating platform. The difference in my playing yeah, yeah. was huge. Yeah. Uh, so, because initially I found it so confronting, because um, you can you can hear everything in that setup, and it forces you to play cleaner. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of uh, practice setups where. I don't want to say masks your mistakes, but yeah, it's yeah, easier yeah. to fluff them. Well, I think everyone will be familiar with that thing where you, you practice something at home, 
and then you get to your gig or your rehearsal and everything's completely different because the sound is alien and it's yeah, all yeah. weird and yep. it forces you to play differently. That's what you're talking about there, yep. I think. Yep. As a result, um, I don't have any amplification at home at all. I've got my acoustic guitar and I'll take an electric guitar home. And if I'm practicing, if I'm working out stuff for a show, I'll sit there and I'll work out the notes. Mm-hmm. And I'll play along with it super quiet, just, you know, acoustic to work out the, the notes and the chords. I'll write basic notes. And then I will, before we had this, I would go to a rehearsal studio and yeah, yeah. take my full rig. So important. Um, play it banging loud through the PA. And that's where I would do my practice. Yep. Um, and that's what I do in here now because yep. I can't, I just, if I practice at home, by the time I get to the gig, I won't be committing to it. I'll be over bending everything. Yeah, yeah. I just, I wouldn't be connecting with it at all. Yeah. So it's a combination of practice and routine, I would mm-hmm. say. Um, but practicing, pra- you know, if you're an electric guitar player, you need to practice plugged in and amplified. Yeah. You know, the, it's really, I mean, I sit down, whenever I sit down, the guitar's always in my lap and I'm always noodling. That's great. But it's very different than being sat in front of what's ultimately the sound source, yeah. you know. Because the, the all the the other dimension that that adds, but yeah, I guess it depends what you're practicing for, doesn't it? If it's if it's practicing to get better, for sure, sit there. You don't need to be plugged into anything, and do your exercises and improve mm. your dexterity. But that doesn't equate to any sort of musicality or useful um, connection with humans when it comes sure. to what playing a guitar is all about. Yeah, yeah. This is turning into philosophy. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, Matthew <clears throat> Kybert and William Hawkins. How much difference does the material the cabinet is made of make to tone and loudness? MDF <laughs> by resin. Well, really interesting. Con- this is contentious. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it's massive. I've done quite a lot of speaker cabinet testing with various people. Um, now, uh, let's do this quickly. In something like a studio monitor or a PA cab, you want the uh, cabinet to be as inert as possible. And that's why MDF and well-designed cabs with loads of internal damping is really important. Mm. and speaker design in that world is a really super clever thing with a guitar amp you want the opposite you want the cabinet to contribute to the sound Mm. Um, if you want proof um, find an old Fender Tweed or or a black face that's made with a pine cab Um, Tweed's more commonly um, it's a very resonant material and the resonance of that cabinet contributes hugely to how the amp sounds Mm -hmm. and then compare that with a kind of modern built um, birch ply cabinet which is how most cabinets are made these days it's not worse it's not better but it does sound different Mm. and the common criticism of mdf is that it sounds that's particle board if it's not called mdf around the world is that it is inert sounding and it doesn't add that flavor to the amp interestingly victory's cabinets most modern cabinets are made using a um like a marine grade birch ply usually Mm. usually and that is somewhere between um a single layer wood and something like an mdf you know it's it's not inert but it's not as resonant as as pine Mm -hmm. those cabs have got pine top back and sides no top bottom and sides and a and a ply back so the cabinet does resonate more than it does in Sorry, I've gone way into that. It makes a massive difference. Yeah, it does make a big difference. Big difference. And linked to that, uh, the Mike Austin B, can you or have you done a comparison between a standard 1x12 and a passive flat response full range speaker cabinet? Shiver. A flat, for anyone who doesn't know, um, a guitar cabinet is voiced for guitar. A guitar speaker is voiced for guitar. It doesn't really have much sub bass. It doesn't really do much above however many K in the treble frequency. Mm -hmm. And it's got a very funny curve. It's anything but flat. Uh, A studio monitor, for example, ought to be somewhere closer to flat. And a full range flat response speaker is that. It's a PA cab. It's a studio monitor. And when you plug a guitar into it, it sounds horrific. Unless you have some sort of speaker modeling sure some sort of ir etc 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 would be an interesting thing to do very interesting you know we think it sounds horrific therefore we must do it so rusto cap says what are the most basic uh, inexpensive things that you can do to a rig that yield the most benefit um this is a, a massive question and i think that's one that we can have a look at um the the it, the easiest answer is more of this. Play more, yeah, turn yeah. the game down. 
Turn the game down. Boom. Turn Answered. the bass down. Done. Sort your power out on your pedal board. That's not exp- that expensive. That's not inexpensive. No. Um, simpli- Turn the bass down. Simplify and, and play better, yeah. which is advice that's as relevant to us as it is to everyone else out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yes. This this is uh, So Justin O'Neill, Patrick Green and Fed42 were asking about the close miking which we answered before. Yes. Um, you're only mic- you're only mic- close micing the speaker. Why do we hear such a difference between them? Uh, I think we answered that. Because we have Because we have room, room mics. And, and the speakers have different yeah. characters. Yeah. Uh, Actually, sorry, I will just add. He will. I know producers who treasure certain 4x12 cabs mm-hmm. because they've gone through so many 412s, they've listened to every speaker in the 412 and they all sound different. Wow. And when they find... The, the one. one they like with a couple of speaker options which do the thing that they want to do. They put a ring They on treasure it. it and they... Yeah, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> how how deep in the blues do you want to go, to quote Robin Ford? Uh, Stu is a lemon. <laughs> what was your first setup, um, guitar effects amp? We recently did a the Captain Meets. Yeah. Uh, where he asked us this, and we go into great detail. I don't know when that's out. Yeah, on the Anderson's that's, channel. That's um, because that's a there's a the. So what, what, is, do you mean first ever, or do you mean like first when you played your first gig? Uh, what was your first setup? Go on then. Your first gig. What was your first setup? Oh, wow. While he's thinking about it, I'll tell you my, what mine was. It was a. I know what it is. A satellite Strat copy. Right. A Yamaha 50 watt solid state amp. Right. And that was that. I had. I was 13. I uh, I had a PV, not the Bandit, but the smaller one, little PV, Roland GP8, and a Striker by Kramer. Nice. That was my second guitar. And I uh, sat, in, sat in a, at a jam. I was 16. Late starter. Um. I did stuff at school, but there was I didn't have that was my first rig. Yeah, yeah. I had stuff at school that I borrowed. I had guitars, but my first time I had a rig. I played in front of I played when I was eight. I played in front of the class at school with my uh, KSG copy of my K plastic framed practice amp, and I played Highway to Hell. When you were eight, pretty sure. Wow, man. Or That's no, great. I played Quo. I played Quo. It was quo. Anyway, I used to I used to take my acoustic guitar into school when I, in primary school from grade one. I used to take it in with me every day, just in case someone wanted me to play something. <laughs> I don't remember that, but my mum tells me that's the truth. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Gay Ramirez, Mick. <laughs> I had a dream that he made out with my girlfriend, and I wasn't even mad. Sorry, <laughs> there's, there's no reply to that, Gabe. But I'm pleased you weren't mad. Uh, regards. <laughs> Okay, Hello. RJ Connor. Will two 1x12 speaker cabs and two 20 watt amps do better than a 1 amp into 2x12 in terms of headroom, clarity, and loudness? Depends what the other amp is, but yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. if you're using 122 watt amp into a 212 or two 22 watt amps into 212s, yes, massive. Yep. Double the power. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Huge. Huge. Um, Jeffrey Raddick. You talk about that 15 watt uh, being what too quiet. So we Dan and I, when we were setting it up, were saying that the bass breaker was a bit too quiet for us. I play my 1x12 20 watt PRS Sonzera 20 with the clean channel, volume at 9 o'clock, and it's too loud. Are my ears too sensitive? Maybe it just isn't as loud as it seems to me. I can't figure it out. I've tried using a sound meter to measure the SPL, and I'm seeing 115 dB regularly, and I fear for my hearing. Yeah, 115 dB if you're like a meter or two away from the amp. That's loud. That's loud. So See, it's clean channel, high transients. Absolutely. So where, where we play, we've got... You know, there's sound dampening here, it, and it absorbs a lot of that, you know, that material. If it's, Sorry, the, the loudness. If you're in a room that's really reflective, all of that sound is, is bouncing around, and it's, it's coming back and hitting you. So just, you know, where the amp is sat in the room, and the sort of room also makes a massive difference. Also, the difference between, you know, one 20-watt amp and another 20-watt amplifier, it's sort of in terms of headroom. So the, the bass breaker... We'd set it to have maximum headroom, um, and at maximum headroom, it's not a very loud amplifier. No, no, no. It's, it's breaking up, so it's going into overdrive and compression, so you're not getting 15 watts. You're probably only getting 7 or 8 watts until yep. it starts overdriving, whereas in your Sonzera, 
depending on how it's designed, you know, 20 watts clean is loud. Yeah, it's loud. really loud. Absolutely. So, so yes, uh, yeah. yeah, don't go above 115 dB too regularly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. definitely that's not good. Uh, Gemma Seymour. Hi, Gemma. Hello, Gemma. Gemma. Yeah, she comments on all our videos. Yeah, uh, always, thank you. Yeah. always says something intelligent yeah. and uh, well-researched and knowledgeable. Yeah, so yeah. thank you, Gemma. Yeah, really appreciate it. Um, and Gemma uh, corrects us, says, for the record, the Zvex Nano head is a... Half watt, or half, half watt, watt ever watt. Yeah, sorry yeah, about that. Perfect. It is. Thank it's not point five watts, not one watt. Um, Sebastian Brad Viliak or Atch, depending on where you come from. Um, Sebastian Brad Viliak, maybe. Um, how would the three different cabs compare in a mix? And Rohan Kemraj also asked that question. What works best in a mix? Mm -hmm. And I think I would refer the honourable gentleman to the answer to the previous question, which is all bets are off. Yep. It depends entirely on the amp, the pedals you're using, the engineer. Band. So it's really, the cab is just one, it's just one thing in that whole yep. soup, isn't it? Yep. Um, Ricard Lima Pereira, how does cab build affect speaker behavior? So interesting. So, you know, the, you know, the, the way that the cab is designed has a massive impact. Uh, you have um, a fundamental frequency, uh, you know, in a, in a resonating box. And depending on the size and the, you know, the, um, that changes that frequency. and that How it's braced, all that whether stuff. it's ported. If you have a look at, um, do you remember uh, the turbo, uh, turbo sound? The, the, oh, yep. And they have these subs that are incredible. You look at the way that they're designed and it's these channels that sort of go inside the, you know, it's brilliant. Um, it, it has a massive, 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 massive effect. effect. Some of the best cabs I've ever seen and had the pleasure to watch being made and talk through the design process was at Boogie, at Mesa Boogie. They go, they go to yep. the nth degree yep. designing cabs and as a result, most of their cabs sound absolutely stellar. One of the best guitar sounds I ever heard was a Boogie. It was a 2x12, but it had a closed 1x12 in section and an open back 1x12 yeah. on top section. Is that the one with the grill on the front? Yes. So the upright, oh, I wish I kept mine. Man, honestly, <clears> I, <throat> I was in a shopping centre and there was a band playing and I heard the guitar sound and that's what he was using. It was unbelievable. Joe Mummy, show us what we want to see. Dad's new pedal board build. It's on the way. There is something on there that I, I can't show you just yet. Um... And I'm undecided about two things, but uh, we've got some gigs coming up and it's got to be done for then. So it's on the way. Um, Caleb at MGW says, why do you guys not have a deluxe reverb? I assume he means the 65 deluxe reverb reissue. Mm. I don't know. I mean, it's it's after the hot rod deluxe, it's probably the most commonly used valve amp out there. I've got, a, I've got some foil and lint. Oh, I see. Dan's suggesting there may be a, um, a financial, which you wouldn't believe looking at all these things we do. Uh, no, we should, we should get one of those. Maybe, maybe we can get one on loan from Fender because um, it is a super common amp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's the amp that when Pro Guitar Shop people voted on what amp Andy should use, that's what they... Really? Yeah, yeah. That's what okay, they said. all right. I mean, it's a phenomenally popular and brilliant amp. All right, I'll upgrade from my lint. Um, is it possible to make... Sorry, Fabian Eriksson... Asks, is it possible to make a wet dry setup with a combo amp and an external speaker? No. No. You, you need, need a power amp. source for that external speaker. Yeah. yeah. So and, and for that, if you wanted to do that, if you've got your amp, your favorite amp you like and a 112, you could easily get something like a Seymour Duncan 170 power stage or the new quilter that's just come out or an EX uh, an EH Magnum 44, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. You wouldn't have to have a whole other amp. You just need something to amplify to do the wet dry thing. Mm -hmm. um, Batoli 20 and Petrus Nord. Um, an episode on speaker sizes would be fascinating, 10s, 12s and 15s. And mm. also Alex Hoff says, if we have any opinion on sizes for bass speaker cabs. Another show. Yeah. Every time we talk about 10s, you always say, oh, they sound a bit uh, middly and they've got a, a brittle high end. And you say 12s sound really balanced and 15s have got really solid low end, but they don't lack highs. You know, all the cliches come out. And and when I listen to them, they all seem to be true. Right. There you go. <laughs> um, 
So maybe we should do that. Base cabs, Ampeg SVT, 8x10. Anything else, go home, please. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Paddy. We, I had a, did a gig with a bass player in Australia, and he had an Aussie monitor power amp, 1,000 watt power amp, and it's 1x15 cab. And he just had this precision, this low slung precision, and it was just heavenly yeah, yeah. it was so good but the idea that 15s can't do highs and 10s yeah. can't do lows is cobblers it's yeah. not it's just not true no nope, not at all uh, andy lord can you please speak to my wife and explain to her why i need a 4x12 in my life andy this is easy this is really easy try this yeah. try this you don't wear wellies to a wedding and you don't wear your best shoes to do the gardening I like it. Therefore, this 1x12 is just not suitable for certain things that I do. Perfect. If that doesn't work, you just have to buy one surreptitiously and hide it somewhere, which is what most of us do. Yeah. Buy it and we'll, we'll, we'll hide it for you here. Yeah. Just come pick it up when you want a gig. Fart Knocker <laughs> says, I fart cleaner than Fender. And finally... Proud of you. Jose Vega says, wow, boring. boring.